This is a brief introduction to Microsoft Excel, and it's not exhaustive. There are a lot of things you can do with Excel, but this is just a way for someone to get started with it. Okay, now Microsoft Excel is a spreadsheet tool that helps arrange data and perform calculations. It's extremely useful, and it's very easy to get started with, and I feel like everyone should have a basic understanding of Microsoft Excel. And so here's a few things that we should know, okay? So this is a spreadsheet. It's just a way to arrange data, and it's broken up into these rectangles that we call cells. And you can pick any cell you want and insert either a text or a number or formulas, calculations. And you do that here with this FX bar here. We call it the formula bar. So whatever I type in there will go in cell A1 because that A1 is what's highlighted. And so to demonstrate this, I have a few exercises I want to go through just to show you how Excel can do some things, and it's pretty practical, okay? So first of all, in cell A1, I'm going to type Monday. Now notice the text is going into the formula bar, but it also fills the cell A1. Now if I hit Enter, it'll move down. If I hit Tab, it'll move to the right, okay? So I wanted to type Monday in cell A1, there it is, and it is red like a grid. You have like an x-axis that goes through the alphabet and a y-axis that's going through the integers. All right, now the second thing I'm gonna ask to do is in cell A2, so that would be the A column, the second row, type in 10. So now I've typed in a number in one cell in A2, and I've typed in a word or text in cell A1, and also in B2, I wanna type in 11, and in A10, going all the way down here, I'm gonna type the number 20. This is just inputting data, and we'll do some stuff with this data in a little bit. All right, the next thing is Excel can also be used as a calculator. So just demonstrate that in cell A3, I'm gonna type in the following. I'm gonna type in four plus five times six minus two, and watch what happens. Nothing. Nothing happened there. And the reason it didn't do the calculation is because I didn't insert the magic formula button. I didn't insert the equal sign. So if I hit equals, now Excel knows it's going to perform some sort of calculation. And when I hit enter, I get the value 32. All right. And that would be 5 times 6 is 30, plus 4, 34, minus 2, 32. Right. Multiplication takes precedent over addition. So that's how I get the number 32. Now in cell A4, we're going to insert a formula. And there are a lot of Excel formulas built in. Some of them are very complicated and some are very easy. We're going to start out with something kind of mathematical, SQRT. And you can see here the formula brings out suggestion. SQRT returns the square root of a number. And that's exactly what I want to do. So if I typed in, for example, the square root of 10 and hit enter, there it is, the square root of 10. Okay, now what I'd like to do instead is reference this cell because maybe I'll change that value from 10 to something else later and I want my square root to follow. So what I'm gonna do here is instead of the number 10, I'm gonna write the cell that I'm talking about. So I type in 82. Notice that there's this blue rectangle in the cell A2 because it's being referenced in this formula. And when I hit enter, it, I get the same value, I get the square root of 10, but that's because I have 10 in the cell A2. Now watch, if I change it to, let's say, 15. Now my calculation in A4 changes, right, because the input changed. All right, so let's go back to 10, we want to keep it like that. All right, so hopefully that makes sense, that's how we do some calculations. And also, we are using formulas, and we're also now showing that Excel can do these cell references. Now. Another example of that is in cell A5, I want to type in A2 divided by A10. A2 divided by, and I'm doing something funny in the denominator here, I'm saying divided by A10. So I'm now doing another calculation. Notice I have a blue rectangle in A2, a red rectangle in A10, and hopefully this will calculate 10 divided by 20, 0.5, it did. All right, so we can do these cell references, which are very, very useful if you're doing like a budget or something like that. Now, another very useful thing in Excel is that Excel is pretty sharp in picking up patterns. So when I write Monday here, 
Excel kind of understands that we're talking about some sort of schedule. And if you notice, there's this rectangle around the cell A1. And when I go to the bottom right corner, it kind of, the cursor turns into that black plus. Now, if I click and hold down that black plus and drag across either horizontally or vertically, I want to do horizontal here. Notice you can see it's suggesting Tuesday when I keep going all the way to E1. I've, it filled out automatically Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. It knew what I was trying to do. And notice on column C, it's not wide enough to say Wednesday. If I double click in between C and D, it'll fix that automatically. So now I have Monday through Friday, and it looks pretty good. Okay, so that was with text. Now watch what it can do with numbers. So if I go, let's highlight 10 and 11. And if I hold that down and drag across, it figured out that pattern as well. And actually, Excel can figure out more complicated patterns. So for example, let's say we do even numbers, two, four, six, and if I keep dragging, it's gonna pick up the pattern of even numbers. All right, so Excel does some good stuff. Okay, let's do the same thing with cell A4. Let's drag that all the way to E4. And remember, this is a square root of A2. So when I drag it across here, what happens? Well, let's check it out. Let's look at C4. C4 is referencing the square root of C2. So Excel knew that I what I wanted here as I drag this across is I wanted the square root of the values in my A column. And so it filled those out automatically instead of having to write square root of such and such every single time. That's pretty cool. Let's do the same thing with A5. Let's go out from drag from A5 all the way to E5. And it calculated, well, what does it calculate? Let's see, if I, so if I go to C2, let's go to D2, check it out. I have D2 divided by that value of A10. So it's taking every one of these and dividing by 20. Okay, now at the beginning, you may have wondered, when we first filled out A5, why did I put the dollar sign around A down here in the denominator? So let's take out the dollar signs, drag it across and see what happens. So, okay, so there's a, it looks, I got the same value. All right, let's drag across here and see what happens. Whoa, I'm getting some sort of error. It looks like it says dividing by zero. So if I go to D2, look, it says D2 divided by D10. D10 has nothing in it, so it's trying to divide by zero. We don't want to divide by D10. We want all of these to be divided by A10. So how do I keep that value as I drag across? And so that's what I was doing with the dollar signs. If I put a dollar sign around the A for A10, now when anytime I drag this box, it's going to fix that A10 value as a constant. It will not change that. So as I drag across here, it gets, it gets exactly what I want to notice in D2 now. I have D2 divided by that same cell, A10. So the dragging tool is very, very useful. I hope this makes sense. This is, again, just a basic introduction to some of the things we can do in Excel. We'll do some more interesting things a little later, but we're just trying to get the basic mechanics. But with this, you are ready to make your own personal budget. If you have questions, let me know. I'd be glad to help. And thank you for watching.